Today we are going to make version 2 of the wireless water level indicator using ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth modules, a pair of long-range LoRa transceiver modules and the most versatile UART version of the A02YUW waterproof ultrasonic sensor. Let me first tell you about the version 1 so that you can better understand why I made version 2 of the same project. Version 1 of the wireless water level indicator was based on the TTGO LoRa32. This board has the ESP32 LoRa OLED display module and so many other things on the board itself. So I didn't have to connect everything manually because most of the connections were already done. So on the transmitter side, I simply connected a waterproof ultrasonic sensor, the JSNSR040 and that's it. And on the receiver side, I didn't connect anything. You know why? Because the development board already has the LoRa and OLED display module. With this simple setup, I was able to monitor the water level within 1 to 2 kilometers. It was based on one-way communication, therefore I could only monitor the water level. I could add more features like controlling the water pump automatically or manually or a long distance. I could add a feedback feature and I could also connect it to an IoT cloud platform like Blink, UV Dots, ThinkSpeak, etc. But I didn't do it on purpose because I had to keep it simple and easy to follow. The reason I decided to make version 2 of the same project is that I have been receiving lots of emails and messages from my followers on different social media platforms. The majority of them requested me not to use the TTGO LoRa32 because that didn't have much control over the component selection. As you may know, LoRa modules come with different frequency bands 433 MHz, 868 MHz and 918 MHz. So let's say if you are from North America or Asia, then you are not allowed to use the 868 MHz version of the LoRa model because this frequency band is only permitted in Europe. Since I am from Pakistan and uh, I am also not allowed to use the 868 MHz frequency band, that's why in version 2 of the wireless water level indicator, I decided to use the 433 MHz SX127 LoRa modules. These are the same LoRa modules I used with the Arduino. They are available in different frequency bands and the good thing is all these LoRa modules share the same pin layout. Furthermore, you don't need to make any changes in the programming except for the frequency band selection. They also requested me to add more features so with version 2 of the wireless water level indicator, we can not only monitor the water level or a long distance using LoRa but we can also send that information to the Blink IoT application. The water level information from the transmitter where there is no Wi-Fi or GPRS connectivity is transmitted to the receiver side or a long distance using long range LoRa modules where we have GPRS, 4G LTE or Wi-Fi connectivity. So the receiver side also acts as the LoRa gateway. Let me also tell you the range depends on different factors such as the type of antennas you are using on the transmitter and receiver sites. I have a full dedicated video on the types of LoRa antennas. It also depends on whether your LoRa modules are in line of sight or if there are obstacles between the transmitter and receiver. So make sure you watch my video on the types of LoRa antennas. Anyway, if you are near the receiver side, you can directly read the water level information on the display and if you are outside, then you can check the water level information using the Blink application. Furthermore, you can use this button on the receiver side to control a relay on the transmitter side to turn a water pump on or off. For this, first you will need to switch to the manual mode on the Blink application. Otherwise, this button won't work. It also adds a layer of security to your control system because until the control is transferred to the receiver side, nobody would be able to turn the water pump on or off. Remember safety first, when the 110 or 220 volt AC supply is connected, never touch the relay contacts as it can be extremely dangerous. It is important to note that when working with means voltage, proper safety precautions should always be taken and it is advisable to consult relevant electrical codes and standards. And when we change this to the auto mode, then we can directly control the relay using the Blink application. For the transmitter and receiver side connections, you can follow these circuit diagrams. They are available on my website electronicclinic.com. I have added a link to the article in the description. Now let's start with a Blink web dashboard setup. While you're logged into your Blink account, click on the new template. Write the template name. While ESP32 is selected as the hardware type and Wi-Fi as the connection type, click on the done button. After this, all the steps are exactly the same. 
I have already created quite detailed video on the Blink Whip dashboard setup so if you face any issues you can watch my getting started tutorial on the ESP32 and new Blink V2.0. When the dashboard is ready, simply copy these credentials, open the receiver side program that you can download from our website electronicplanet.com and paste the credentials. Don't forget to change the GPRS credentials. If this is your first time using the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module, then you will also need to install the ESP32 board in the Arduino IDE. For this, you can watch my getting started tutorial on the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. Next, you will also need to install the entire Blink library package. For this, simply go to the Sketch menu, then to include library and click on the Manage Libraries. Type Blink in the search box. You can see I have also installed this library. It works with over 400 boards. You will also need to install the required LoRa, Adafruit, GFX and Adafruit SSD 1306 libraries. For this, simply copy the library name. Then go to the Sketch menu then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Paste the library name. Scroll down and search for the LoRa library by Sandeep and install it. You can see I have already installed this library. Repeat the same steps for the remaining libraries. Finally, you can upload the transmitter and receiver side programs into your ESP32 development boards. In my case, I have already uploaded the transmitter and receiver programs. Next, you can start with a Blink IoT application setup on your smartphone. Our application is also ready. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends.
see you in next episode and thanks for watching